yeah. you should not go you should not go unzip and then like straight in because yeah. that's not she's how that works. She's having a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just a great oh man when she's chatting with her gal pals there after. are sparks flying yeah. out of her very dry oh, vagina. <laughs> Brunch. Hit it boys. I am a man of the woods, I've learned. Oh, yeah? Why yeah, you I realized that? this in like the last uh, day. So I was already having a problem with my phone. Apple is trying to get me to get a new phone, so it's doing the thing where it breaks your old phone. If you don't believe that's a real... You, you know that that's a thing, I right? absolutely believe that that's yeah, a real they, thing. Yeah, they like fuck up your battery from afar. Mm-hmm. They're, they're making it so my phone keeps slipping into uh, ringer mode. And I'm that's like, a thing? Yeah. I've never dealt with that. I always deal with like... Uh, like you can't download your your uh, app updates because yeah. you, there's like no more space yeah. and they just keep like, making them bigger and bigger. There's fucking space, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, and then today, I went to boot up my computer and it it shut. It kept shutting down while powering up. And then I looked up what what you do about that, and it was like hold these keys, hold those keys. Didn't do anything. So hold these keys, hold these keys. Buy a new laptop. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, keys, keys. And uh, purchase, <laughs> and I just realized the phone thing. I'll have to do something about at some point. I know that, like, it's I need to have a laptop, but I'm just not gonna fucking get a new one. If uh, that thing, I'm either gonna wait for that thing to. I'm gonna be in a little blinking contest with this laptop. Fix yourself, or I'm just not gonna fucking have a laptop. That seems bad for your work. <laughs> it's probably bad for my work. It's probably bad for brunch. It's probably bad, bad for, for your everything. life, every but, aspect of your life. Which stinks because I've really come to like my laptop. I watch movies on there. I do everything on there now. That's probably why it's dying. It's probably you do everything on there. Yeah, um, watching full length movies, download it off the internet, things like yeah, that. Yeah, just yeah, probably, really throwing caution. Not wind. great for it. But uh, the biggest reason I realized I'm a fucking man of the woods is uh, we are recording this on Monday night mm-hmm. and. I texted you and I was like, hey, should we do some coffee? And you were like, hell yeah, we should do some coffee. Let me make a pot. And I was very excited and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a little coffee out out the Keurig for the ride over. And then we're just going to have a big Monday night coffee party. And I put it in a fucking travel mug. And this brings us to listen, motherfucker. Have you ever understood how to use a travel mug have you ever used the travel mug that you understood how to use not really it wasn't more than uh Listen, a to, dollar to use like a travel mug you need to travel and i don't leave my house That's so true. <laughs> like, i was asking i was wondering what that big thing you were holding <laughs> yes. was. all right this is a good fucking travel mug I have I have one of those. Good enough that I just fucking dripped coffee all over my yeah, phone. That's why it doesn't work. You're preaching about how to use travel mugs, and you're just spilling coffee out of yeah. it right now. For one, the lid's not on it. I don't, <laughs> um, but this is like this is a good one. I'm not going to say the brand because they don't fucking pay us, and we've got we've reached we, a fucking, we've reached a point where we have plenty of advertisements. Gro- We're yes. not giving out free promos exactly, except for Movie Pass, except for Movie Pass and Devour. Still, <laughs> um, this is again, it's a good one. This travel mug. Has two buttons on it. Yeah, no, I know. I have one of those. There's that, and there's yeah. this. Yeah. One of them has a lock on it, so I just know never touch that one. Yeah. What the fuck does this one that mean? That one opens the mouth. So you're supposed to hold it towards there, you click the thing, and then you drink out of it. Mmm, nothing's going out. That's because you have the lock on. Well, oh, yeah. Wait. So you push, you push down the other button, unlock it. Oh, mm. there's some coffee that just came out. Yeah. But the coffee that just came out was hot. That's what it's supposed to be. Why do mugs... No, travel... Does anybody who uses a travel mug want their coffee to stay hot? That drives me crazy, yes, too. Yes, absolutely. That's what a travel mug's oh, like per- main really? purpose is for. You don't like when coffee cools down? I like when, coffee's, when coffee cools down, but you don't want it to get cold. But it's not going to get cold. This keeps it like the exact... The things of like... It, it stays the exact same temperature... 
for 41 hours. <laughs> More Paddington talk is next. I'm like, I don't fucking want it. the same temperature for 41 hours. At some point, I want to be able to drink it, you fucking idiot. Yeah, uh, it might. It just could, might be because you just have never unlocked your lid, <laughs> so it just stays completely locked in there right, forever. It's, right, it's completely sealed in there. Yes. There's never been any oxygen. That's you vacuum gotten. seal your yes. coffee and wonder why it never gets colder. Well, maybe don't put fucking 11 buttons on a fucking cup. I thought you were gonna. I thought this was headed in like a direction where you were gonna like preach to me and be like, "Listen, motherfucker, this is how you properly use uh, a coffee mug." Oh, you no. were li- that was literally just like a cry for help in which you wanted to know how to use a coffee mug. Yeah, but I don't. Wa- I don't like these fucking things, and I've never, I've never felt comfortable with them. <laughs> As again, as is explained by the I know, no, I never. I it's one of those things. I I feel like you should never trust one of those things mm. because they're always so cheaply fucking made. And every time I drink from it, I can spill. see that There's fucking a little bit crack. of spillage. Something's gonna happen. Mm. Like yeah, I just spilled it on my phone. Whose fault was that? Mine, because the I was dripping the the cap. The lid was it. off, and you were like wielding it around like a fucking maniac. I st- I guess I I don't fully understand. Uh, the the limits of a, a coffee mug, but I think that this is going to be I think that's going to be uh, uh, difficulty with which a lot of people can uh, relate. Yeah, you know this is I, I'm not a fucking travel mug guy at all. The actually the best travel mugs I've had have been those like shitty ones that you you have you go to like a stupid event and they give you like a, a free one like a one that's basically like a sippy cup and they glued a fucking handle to it. <laughs> That those things at least you know what you're getting. You're like, all right. I feel like the simpler the better, for the yeah. most part. Yes, and it cools down if it's in the simple one. Right, and I also like uh, like the Yeti ones are pretty good, mm. but that yeah, I feel like you're gonna have a problem with that because the Yeti keeps shit They're, the same temperature that it goes in there for like weeks on end. Oh, uh, Yeti Yeti is cool though. That, with, with cold stuff, you want it cold. Yeah, but I mean, with Yeti, hot stuff, Ye- you want it to eventually. Cool yeah, but off. Yeti works both ways. Does Yeti do the hot stuff? Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a Yeti cooler? Uh, I don't have a Yeti cooler. I have a Yeti like koozie. Those are cool. Yeah. Yeah. How much are those? Those are like sixty bucks. Yeah. Right? F- uh, everything that Yeti has is fucking wicked expensive. Yeah. There. It's like the the fucking Patagonia yeah. of uh, <laughs> of temperate of of beverage temperature uh, we- weapons tools. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Hey, since I just gave you a trick uh, of how to drink your coffee, can I give you a time-saving tip? Do it. Uh, getting my contact lens prescriptions through Simple Contacts, baby. Uh, I got my prescription renewed from my couch yesterday in under five minutes using an awesome new app called Simple Contacts. Simple Contacts let you lets you renew your prescription and reorder your brand of lenses from anywhere in minutes through an online vision test. It's designed by doctors, and every test is reviewed by a doctor, so they're literally bringing their doctor's office to your home. This isn't a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam, but you can't beat the convenience of simple contacts when it comes to ordering your new lenses. The prices are unbeatable, the vision test is only 20 bucks, and shipping is free. Best of all, our listeners get $30 off their first Simple Contacts order with promo code BRUNCH. Ooh. Try it for yourself. Save 30 bucks on your lenses by going to simplecontacts.com slash brunch or entering the promo code BRUNCH at checkout. Again, that's simplecontacts.com slash brunch or entering promo code BRUNCH at checkout. So we were told we cannot swear mm-hmm. during ad reads, yeah. and I completely understand that, but... That's also kind of nobody tells the bad boys what to do. <laughs> so I'm thinking that we should try to time our ad reads around our most vulgar segments. So the second we get out, so like maybe uh, ad reads can come just before Listen Motherfucker. Yes, I like that idea. Yeah. Uh, Bring back a little bitch of the week, have it go before ad reads. I like the, uh, we talked about this. Call a little uh, curse sandwich. We talked about this like a, a week or so ago where. Uh, we are very bad. I don't know if this actually made the final cut of one of the podcasts. Who knows? Uh, but we it talked about how bad we are at ad reads and just like how people want to give us money and we're just like, ah. Uh, oh, no, no. You that, do that's like two or three things. And yeah. I'm not interested in this. No, that is. I mean, we worked, th- th- for, that, we worked that, our asses off to be able to get. Uh, is get p- sponsors totally. and promos and and all that, and then they come they come knocking on our door and we're like, mm, well, you need me to sign on this line? That's eh, a little too much work. For Have me. you seen The Graduate? No. So the graduate, this this can't be the first time I've explained the graduate to oh, you. Well, he he works to get this girl, and then they get married, and then they're on the bus, and it's like uh, they run what? away. He breaks up her wedding, and then they run away, get on the bus, 
and then they're so happy oh, they that's did why it. she's in the and wedding then, dress huh? yeah okay. and then the, because what comes before that so that's an iconic scene but what comes right before that is an iconic scene too you know the only reason that, i know that scene 500 Days Summer. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, that's how I learned. 500 Days Summer is how I learned that I misunderstood the end of The Graduate. Uh, because All right, it, because it's painted as a sad sad, uh, sad movie in, in 500 Days of Summer. It is a sad movie, but they're saying that uh, he misunderstood it. He thought that uh, as long as you get the girl, then everything's it's all okay. Good, yeah. But it's very important that final second of the movie where their faces are both just kind of like, oh, all right, now what? You know, like we got so caught up in the chase. And then once you get it, you're like, who cares? Scrubs later did that with Elliot breaking up Sean or uh, JD breaking up Elliot and Sean's relationship. He does the, it should have been me. And then she dumps him, goes to JD. And then at the rehearsal dinner for Carla and Turk's wedding, he says, I don't love you. And then she beats the shit out of him. That was a crazy episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, scrubs is such a weird show but it's i love i love yeah. scrubs you know what i love in scrubs this is what uh so my friend mike was like pushing scrubs on me hard and i was like man i'll check out scrubs whenever the fuck i want and he showed me uh what, what who's who's jd uh spin game to it might be heather graham he's trying to figure out uh if she likes him mm-hmm. and in his head he's like tell a joke that's not funny if she laughs it means she likes you so he says so did you hear about the skeleton that didn't go to the party? He had no body to go with. And she laughs at it. And then his head, he was like, you idiot. You shouldn't have used that joke. That joke's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that show is such fucking like goofy ass humor. Yeah. And it's just great. But it's, it's a little more. So like JD and Michael Scott are like the two television characters with whom I relate a lot. And I don't think they're supposed to be relatable characters. Michael like Scott, a lot of like Michael Scott's not, embarrassing I, shit, I'm like, uh, I bet I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, I, Michael Scott for sure is uh, is you should be less related yes, yeah. to him. But like, there's depth to JD's character where he's like, he has like butts. I think he has like bouts of depression and like mm. he has a lot of anxiety. He's a, self-de- he's a uh, self-destructive guy. Yeah, like yeah. he's like. Well, the, even the fact that it's told from Got inside, good hair. His, yeah. Even the fact that it's told from, from like inside his own head, yeah. It, that kind of like it plays into like he has a lot of anxiety. He has a lot of like, w- like who am I? Where am I going? That that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, I don't know. That shows. I feel like a lot of people probably relate to this, some of the stuff that that JD goes through. Yeah, in that, in that series. Let's do a Scrubs episode. Um, JD gets. JD gets, and I hate to do this because people are always like, oh, this guy on this TV show is too tool. How does he get so many hot chicks? It's like just because he's, he's fucking living and he's not sitting around being like. He's also a doctor. like or a, That's a, true. A doctor in, in the making. Doctor he's in doc- training. Yeah, I think he's a resident, he's a resident yeah. for like 44 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he just fucking lives his life. And uh, he seems funny? like a nice guy. He's Yeah, he's got an outgoing personality. Yeah. Now, so I'm I'm defending JD now like I'm defending myself. I'm like, yes. look, a lot of girls probably aren't going to be into him, but some of them, let me fucking tell you, some of them, some of them. Yeah, I mean, anybody who like argues that it's unreal, like he absolutely goes for like smokes. Yeah, I would argue that it's more unrealistic that there's that many hot women that like That's just hang true. around a fucking hospital. Yeah. All day. Uh, the Sacred Heart Hall of Fame is that's a whole fucking wing. You yeah, got fucking seriously. Colin Farrell in there. You got Heather Graham. You got Elizabeth Banks. You got like I mean, Sarah Chalk Elliot is like like she's like a, a Sacred Heart three. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. And, and, and she's fucking gorgeous. Even Carla is like pretty. Hot. Oh, definitely, definitely. I love that when the series starts, like. The first order of business is like, all right, Turk, you are all fucking you are over. <laughs> yeah, like you are all over Carla. That's a fucking good show, man. It I is. bet I could go back and watch it, and I'd be like, yeah, this was fucking good. I was discussing this the other day. We were saying, who's I doing this with? We were saying, uh, who your, who's your favorite Scrub characters? Uh, it's probably Adam Hart. Adam Hart and I kind of did everything together. I feel like Adam Hart's a big, uh, big Scrubs guy. I he can is. See it. He yeah. is. Um, he. What? Who did he say was? I said let's do process of elimination. Start with the Todd. The Todd fucking. The Todd sucks. is out. The Todd yeah. is uh, a zero. Yeah. Oh, 100%. the Todd is a total zero. But no, but he's no, but he's, 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 he's masquerading as a zero. Right. And he's secretly he's well gay. gay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, let me think. But the the really good. I mean, every character in it is likable. 
Pretty much. Like, Dr. Cox is his tortured soul. Except for, uh, well, Kelso is even likable. Right, yeah. He's Kelso, funny. <laughs> yeah. Kelso's very set in his ways, but he's, he's searching for something. Yeah, there's really not, like, a I can also identify with Elliot. I think that that's, like, a very, that that's a realer fake show than you'd think, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even like the hospital a lot of the aspects of it. are, are like... No, those are doable. You right, know, those exist. Yeah, and like even the even the hospital aspects of it, like the they fucking are they're just like really mean to yeah. like a lot of the people who don't have like health insurance and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, uh, it and like they there's not like a house sort of thing where every person that comes in has this completely undiagnosable <laughs> right. thing until the fucking last five minutes of the episode. Right. Uh, He's like, people fuck, die. why did I just work in this, the hot hospital? How come I worked in the fucking crazy, undiagnosable uh, <laughs> disease hospital? You either work at the house hospital where it's just crazy shit happening all the time, yeah. or just go to fucking Fuck Mountain over in Sacred Heart. <laughs> everybody's fucking, everybody's hot. It's an awesome time. <laughs> That's like a hospital fucking summer Heather camp. Fucking Heather Locklear goes, by, goes yep. through there for a while. It's a hospital summer camp. Yeah. They all just fucking have a grand old time. They're all friends and they all bang each other. When they find out that they, when they like apply for an internship and they find out they get Sacred Heart, they're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dave. Fr- no, Dave Franco is in uh, another it, one. He's no, he's, he, he's in, uh, yeah, he's at the tail end of the, right, but he's I don't at think the school. It's in, yeah, yeah, it's the school. Uh, wh- wh- why didn't that girl become a star? Out that she, I, he, I, I mean, he obviously that. became a star. I didn't watch Aziz the last, became a star. I didn't watch the last few seasons. So yeah. I, the last season, I, think I didn't was, know Aziz was in it either. Yeah, the, wow. the uh, stacked fucking cast and they bombed. Huh? Right. Yeah. It was. Um, well, I think that John C. McGinley had said that what they did was when ABC got the show uh, because it was, right it was NBC and then went to ABC. When yeah. ABC got the show, they told like everyone in the cast like you can come. We want you to be in the show. Here's how much we can pay you. But if you ask for e- even a cent more, then we just can't do it. We're moving on. And uh, like everybody naturally tried to negotiate. And I think the only ones that were like, cool, were Donald Faison and uh, John C. McGinley. And so they were like, all right, it's the Turk, Dr. Cox, <laughs> and Aziz Ansari, and Dave Franco. And this girl, who I thought was going to be a star, and she didn't. I feel like Donald Faison hasn't done anything since that either. I feel like Donald Faison is just, like, very, um, like, gracefully semi-retired. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> he does that commercial where he like plays if he the showed f- fake up at doctor. Something, if you, like, if I'm going to use the, the example of these uh, fucking Super Bowl parties they had in Minneapolis, because it was they were all a fucking cast of characters, it was like a... It was like a bizarro music festival where it's like uh, random quasi celebrities you've kind of heard of, and they would just mix them up and put some here, put some <laughs> over there. Fucking the the Jenny McCarthy one had Joey Fatone in the mix. Jesus. It was uh, just uh, it was Jeremy Roenick, Joey Fatone, Gronk's dad, like just really fucking weird a stuff. Combined IQ of like ninety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, uh, I. I don't know why he's not like, but no, but like he could His show stock up at one was of those high. things. Someone could be like, "Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Faison's in the building." You'd be like, "Oh fuck!" I feel like most people would be like, "Who the fuck is that?" And then he gets on stage and you see him and you're like, "Oh, that guy!" Right? Guy I from used, Scrubs slash yeah. uh, Remember the Titans. Not the guy from Steely Dan. That's Donald Fagan. So Ooh. that might confuse a lot of people if you said Donald Faison <laughs> is in the building. Uh, we have some a little bit of house cleaning to get to. Uh, shout out to all our Patreon people. We're we're climbing yes. up the Patreon ranks, by the way, and we oh. have yeah, we're uh, we're getting up there. We're getting pretty rich, to Ooh. be honest. Uh, but we've also discussed the possibility, or not the possibility, the the, the soon to be reality of us doing Patreon stuff for our for our patrons. Well, we're gonna like sh- like like shout them out and stuff. We're not gonna do like things that are just for. We're patrons. not gonna we're not gonna lock it behind yes, the paywall exactly. But we're gonna find a way to get our uh, our patrons. We're Some gonna, recognition. We're going to find a way to thank you guys. When when you sign up... Um, it's patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Yeah. Let us know if you're in it for the fame or if yes. you're in it for the money to us. Yes. And if you're in it for the fame, then maybe we'll shout you out. Maybe we'll do a little something. Maybe we'll... Um, who knows? Maybe we'll make you a character in a screenplay and do a table read on the show with an actor, I'm not saying who, it's Randy Havens, <laughs> and yeah, 
Um, what else do we have for? Uh, we have one review on uh, on the iTunes machine, and it's by MacBook Pro Spo, uh, and the title is "Yummy." Look. This is the tastiest podcast around. Mm. No matter what the content is, you'll always be satisfied. And don't worry, you're not going crazy. Those clinking sounds are put in by the bad boys of podcasting themselves. I would also recommend giving these guys a follow on Twitter because they're amazing at their day jobs. Do you think you're amazing at your day job? I don't totally understand my day job. Me neither. I don't understand your day job either. But I think you're finding your niche a little bit, man. Uh... Uh... like you, like you had a you had a good old time at Super Bowl week, and you uh, well, you kind of crushed it. I, honestly, so thank you for giving me the thank you for for giving me the the forum to say so. Yeah, we fuck. And then when I say when you say I crushed it, I was in like a small little team. It was three of us, and our job was to just go and make shit happen. I wasn't writing. I wrote a little bit, but I was not there to write. It was just the three of us: me, Adam Hart. Billy Delaney, and it was like, all right, just go be... It was basically like, you're allowed to do whatever stupid shit you want to do. So we would just walk you around. Took full advantage. And Adam, it was like, everything was Adam's idea, pretty much. And then we just like found ways to make things stupid. And we had so much fucking fun. Some people were like, that sucks, that's stupid. And we were like... Man, man, I love how there are wrong people in the <laughs> yeah. world sometimes. Does it uh, make you feel guilty at all when like something like Ad, it was Adam's idea? Mm-hmm. He did the he did the filming, right? Yes. I would assume so. Yeah. Like he did eighty five percent of that, ninety percent of that, and you get all the shine. Well, well, I'm the talent. <laughs> you have to understand. There's the people. There's the talented people who come up with things, and then there's the category of people that they refer to as the talent, yes. which is the meanest fucking yeah, really thing is. in it's the world. So demeaning. It's like. <laughs> You came up with the idea. We're going to call the other person <laughs> yes. the talent. It should really be like, he's the face. Right. He's the, he's the body. Yeah. You're the brain. The, yeah, like the vessel. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. That person's the vessel. Right. But, like, that's how, like, all the uh, all the late night shows. Yeah. They have writing teams. They don't right, make exactly. fucking half those jokes. Yeah. Like, wh- Jimmy Fallon's not funny. Yeah. They yeah. just fucking, they give him jokes, yeah. and he's the vessel, and he's, oh, I'm a fucking goofball. <laughs> well, not to get into, not to get, like, not to do, like, the, uh, like, a, a full roast. audit. <laughs> no, like, a, a full audit. But, I mean, I would, I would do, like, the monologues and the, we, yeah. like, I, I'd, I'd come up with those things. But it was always with Adam. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, and, man. They were so much fun. And uh, doing shit with the laugh track, man, we got to start using laugh tracks. I know. Because it, it's, just, it's just a great fucking feeling. Because as you're doing it, as you're taping it. You can hear it in your head. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> but no, like no one's laughing. And they were like, you'd get, if someone saw that you were shooting something, they'd get like a little mm-hmm. audience. They'd be like, ooh, what's this? And they'd say, what's this going to be on? It'd be like, NBC Sweat Man Bad. And then they'd just fucking disperse. <laughs> uh, by the time you get to Powered by Xfinity, they're, <laughs> they're like, all oh, gone. Powered by, um, idiot, you're not going to know. All right. <laughs> It's not, it doesn't work if you don't have Xfinity. Um, that's not true. You can, um, but the the best was when we were taping the two minute talk show, which that was the, that that was completely Adam's idea with uh, Jenny McCarthy because Jenny McCarthy's people were like, "Hey, uh, we saw you've been doing some stuff. Would you like to use Jenny McCarthy for anything?" And we were like, "Yes, two minute talk show." So she showed up uh, early. She was the coolest fucking person in the world. And uh, I explained it to her, like, what it was. I was like, it's like a talk show, but because you never have any, you never have a chance to actually say anything on a talk show, we play that up. And she was like, oh, awesome. Like, because she was saying, she was like, there's so many times I'll go on a talk show, I'm trying to promote something, I'm trying to say anything, I don't even get to answer any questions or anything. And I was like, exactly. So you're not going to get to do any of that shit. <laughs> and, um, so we're not changing that. Right. So we uh, start to, like, set up for it and everything, and people are like, ooh, it appears Jenny McCarthy's over there shooting something. What could it be? And like people stood around and watched like the like the fucking monologue and everything. And they're like, "What the? Fuck Where is, is this, this going?" And especially without the laugh track or anything, it's like it's really fucking dumb. And then you put in the laugh track, and here's the best part: we <laughs> we said that. Uh, because Gary Tangway did the like the intro. He does like the from Minneapolis. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So we were like, every time we do a laugh track, we'll also put in a little s- sound of uh, Gary chuckling. 
So <laughs> if you go back, you really need to pay attention to see it. But every time there's a laugh track, there's also Gary Tangway going, oh. <laughs> that's awesome, but that's so that's so great because like in every like sitcom where there's a where there's a studio audience yeah. or even a laugh track, like there's always like one person <laughs> yes. in the back and they're like, ha, 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 ha. and doing it with the the most distinctive voice we had available to us yeah. was so fun. Like, oh man, so fucking fun. So uh, no, thank you for that compliment. Uh, it was. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. Again, it'll, it does not provide any clarity uh, as to the whole day jobs thing because no. I don't think that power walking around a mall <laughs> is going. You're to... amazing at it, baby. You're yeah. doing great. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Uh, oh, uh, next week we'll be doing a Fifty Shades Free to review with the boys from Lights Camera Podcast. Yes, they asked us back. We said uh, it's a little early to be doing another episode with you guys. But, but yes, this is, we just want to so fucking badly. Yeah, um, that's it's, probably going to be our second uh, Fifty Shades Free podcast because it comes out on Thursday. We are seeing it in IMAX. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, it's only coming out in IMAX for the first weekend, apparently. What? It's, at least that's what Jeff told me. Jeff told me that in New York City, Jeff's it wrong. is only playing in IMAX. Really? Yeah. We should go to New York City to see it in IMAX. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, Fifty Shades Freed road trip. Yeah. Uh, I Again, I don't know why I'm fucking into like this to... bad movie, but I want to see it from a fucking mountaintop. <laughs> I don't need to. I don't understand why the fuck you would need to put that movie in IMAX at all. Right? Or like the, the sex scenes, your chair is gonna fucking rumble. <laughs> Dude, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> is there gonna be like a? Uh, there, I think there might be action sequences in this Fifty Shades. Oh yeah, this one I think is a kidnapping. Oh, because it's the, uh, the the old boss, the well dressed the... boss guy. Yeah, I think this is where everything comes to a head. Uh. Thank you, because so far we've just Nothing's seen... Happened. Yeah. Oh, my God. The second one. What a fucking boring movie. I say, I've used this joke before, but for a movie about sex, there was no climax in that yeah, movie. Yeah, that was it a was great fucking over. line. over. I was talking to one of my friends, but I was like... Uh, they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, watching... Uh, uh, can't talk. Watching fucking Fifty Shades Darker. And they made the point of like, oh, uh, I wonder if like people can get like sex moves from those movies and i said not from this one because the move is to be the most boring at sex ever the only thing the only like sex move in that one that i was kind of like wow that was kind of cool although the 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 ankle locks did you see that Ooh, it was, was like it was like a fucking ankle lock and there was like a goddamn bar oh and he flipped her <laughs> he over flips her over no but again so that's what i consider boring sex <laughs> 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 but it was like the smoothest flip maneuver yeah, that you could in yeah. like the that was, was time that and was, was timed up with the mu- with the music yeah. like the music fucking dropped as soon as he flipped her over. That was but like Olympic that's not a- sex rotation. <laughs> yeah, like that was a uh, what what's the uh, the 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 spin when you do in a ice skating figure skating? I don't think anyone knows, okay. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, like that. It was like a pirouette. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. But like, it, it, that's a move that you can't really do in real life. I think like you would like dislocate a girl's fucking hip. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And then what fucking happens? The guy you, gotta, you saw the guy in fucking uh, in London got put on the sex offenders list because he grabbed his uh, date's breasts during sex. Oh yeah, you, we, did we talk about this on the podcast? I but either on the would, podcast or, or like sidebar air. of like what the fuck uh yeah he, it was he grabbed him he grabbed him too rough or something right i think she just said like he grabbed him it's like uh, <laughs> unless you laid that out beforehand right what what are just, we even doing just, here just before we go any further yeah. sex for sure but body stuff <laughs> yeah you can go in me just don't touch me yeah exactly we're just gonna do, do some light unzipping <laughs> and that is <laughs> Speaking if you can of, wear this hat and jacket, please. Speaking of of sex movies Gross. and unzipping, yeah. I really need to to 
for Hollywood to get past the whole like, hey, I'm just gonna straight straight up unzip and then go straight to insertion. <laughs> that is yeah. the weirdest <laughs> yes. trend in Hollywood, where it's like you could cut time out of anywhere else in the movie. But yes. if you're making a movie about sex, yeah. you should not go. You should not go unzip and then like straight in because yeah. that's not she's how that works. She's having a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just a great oh uh, man when she's <laughs> chatting with her gal pals. There after. are sparks flying yeah. out of her very dry oh, vagina. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we made a connection, and I was starting to think, and then before you knew it, oh, man. Uh, maybe that's why Hollywood actors have, like, such a problem with sexual abuse. It's like they're doing all these things in the or movies. Or maybe uh, we're just slowpokes. Why were we just... Just we take, should, taking too much time. We should ramp it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking... Yeah. As soon as you get home, unzip and you're, you're in. Right. You know, like the scenes... Uh, Listen, the last in... thing that I need to be doing is shaving time off my experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know the scenes in, uh, like, movies? This happens in TV shows, too, where, like, the, the door opens, like, the apartment door opens, and they're like... Where's the light? And they're already making out. Yeah, I always find that funny too. It's the like, easiest thing in the world to just fucking hit a wall and then like slide up and turn on the light switch. Also, the coach is just there. Just fucking walk over to it. You can like make out outside of the door, open the door, be like, "Do you need anything?" And then you go from there. But the yeah, se- yeah, like that's a Hollywood thing too. You you need yeah. to make out from outside, yeah. straight inside, never stop. Yeah, I uh, so in the. My very very brief stand up comedy days. That was one of my jokes. I was. Is like, that why you just stood up? Yeah. No, I was adjusting the mic, and now I was like, now I got a full head of steam. So uh, I'm gonna start pacing with this. But um, I was like, that thing in the movies when they like burst through the door and they're making out before they they do anything else. Is that an actual thing? It gets like minor little laughs. And I was like, because I don't think I can make out while walking. I'm laughing a little louder now. <laughs> I was like. I can make out while having an erection. I can walk while having an erection. That's where the laughs come. And I was like, I don't think I can make out. I, I think I phrase it better. But uh, it was good. What I would do is I would look at the bartender because it would be at an open mic. And no one is fucking listening at an open mic except the bartender. The bar Because oh. the bartender, it's like the background music for him or whatever. Yeah. So that's the – everybody else is just there because they want to do their sets. Mm-hmm. And open mics are fun because you can never be the fucking worst. Uh, every, somebody's got to be the worst. Yeah, but the guy who's the worst. Like, I remember a guy walked up and he was like, hey, you know what is funny? Rapes. <laughs> and God. everyone was like, he, like, he was going for, like, shock value. Yeah. We were like, you should go for funny value, I bet, man. I, I bet that guy made it because this is the climat for that that kind of joke. Oh, yes, exactly. Everyone, <laughs> Did I say climat? Cl- wow, good for me. Uh, yeah. I really nailed that the pronunciation. <laughs> You said it like a villain. My my mispronunciation of that word was funnier than that guy's set. So whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, but uh, why are we talking about that? Uh, oh, we, we weird sex things yeah. in, in movies. Um, but so yeah, we're doing that with the the Lights Camera Podcast boys next week. Also, this week we have movie reviews that we. So we pro- we did a typical yeah. brunch thing where we started doing something and, and promised then that we were, and then we promised that we were going to do it and then immediately we were like eh we can't do it this no, week. No, but it's it's still in both of our plans. No, we it's just, it's yeah. it's absolutely still happening. Schedule wise, last, last week wanna... was a nightmare in terms of right. You were and gone. It, it would have been lame if we because like remote. Theoretically, I could have woken up early and done it remotely, but then we wouldn't have had the videos. Yeah. We want we want the videos out there because you guys love the YouTube content. So oh, speaking of the YouTube content, yeah. we got absolutely skewered on the uh, the call me by your name reviews. Not by any like brunch listeners because they fucking get our shtick. But like, I guess people oh, were we, just searching for "Call Me by Your Name" and reviews. Were problematic. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know this at all. Yeah, like in the comments section, people were like, "You, you clearly are not understanding what this movie is about." And no, it's, eh, I think we got it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think we got it, buddy. So uh, that was that was an interesting thing. Well, I, I was I'm very curious to see how that goes. Um, because we wanted to do YouTube stuff to introduce ourselves to a new new audience. We introduced ourselves to a new audience, <laughs> and they said us. no thanks. <laughs> um, we uh, we still. Ha- I'm looking very much forward to the three billboards review. So this week we have. Uh, I think we're planning on three billboards: uh, Shape of Water and Darkest Hour. So two movies that I liked and one that I have not seen. You didn't like three billboards. I didn't like three billboards. So did you think that's it was a not spoil. That good or did you think it was terrible? No, I, did, I think that I think that is not that good. Okay, because you, I think you saw it right after 
like the first wave of like oh, three billboards, and I think you were like, I not relax. I saw it. Yeah, no, I saw it um, after everybody was going fucking crazy yes. for it, but yeah. before everybody started fucking hating it. Yes. So I was kind of like, I feel kind of proud that I made my right. decision. I was like, no, this movie's not that good. Well, speaking of making your own decision, the Super Bowl happened on Sunday night. That's right. They did it on a Sunday this year, <laughs> and Echo Chamber Twitter was about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you wanted to fucking devote... A full podcast. I texted you immediately. When, <laughs> yes. when I saw those tweets kind of, I'm like, oh my god, Pink knocked it out of the park. Like, she fucking gutted it out. That doesn't, if you fucking, like, sit, here's, I finally thought of the analogy. Yes. All right. So, Pink had the flu, correct? Yes. And she sang the national Allegedly. anthem. Allegedly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she claims she's good enough that's to talk good, and say that she has very the flu. Good, that's a very good move yeah. uh, to be like, hey, guys. I have the flu. Right. That just lowers the bar like right. a just million like times. Like having a rough vocal day. You have like an yeah. average day at the yeah. office. Everybody's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Good move. She claims to have had the flu and uh, <clears throat> she sang the national anthem and she struggled through it. She, it, it sounded like the national anthem. It did not sound like pink at her best. It, she was very, very flat at points. Obviously, she fucked up the end. But speak into the mic. Mom. But I'll fucking forgive her fucking up the end like that. You can get one fuck up. That's what's yeah. called. That's what we in the biz call uh, being Adele. She <laughs> fucks up once a performance all the time, and then people fucking lose their shit to her. But so she struggled through it, and you, you're happy for her. She she fucking got through it. That's fucking awesome. That's powerful. With what the flu's been doing this year, been fucking killing. She people. didn't die in right. her performance. So yeah, just fucking awesome. And I I love Pink. She's a fucking badass. So it was just really fucking cool. And then people were like, "Man, even with the flu, she killed it." And I was like, "Like killed it," meaning like. Got, got, gutted it out. He was at like A plus, and I'm right? Like, eh, not A plus, but right, like C minus. But I thought it was, it was like, cool. I thought it was in like the B B minus to B range. I thought she did did good. So I can I, I'll take you saying good because that's not what we've been getting. We've been getting A plus plus. We've been getting oh my god, ball and people had shit ready to go. The Globe published something as soon as the fucking anthem was done with the headline, uh, despite flu. Uh, pink nails national anthem and once you see something like that everybody just tweets like oh my god pink goals blah blah like we can say that we're fucking happy for her, that she got it out without fucking lying about the performance here's the analogy it's like saying after gregory campbell stayed on the ice <laughs> after fucking getting his leg fucking shattered by Evgeny malkin <laughs> that he fucking crushed that shit. Was that on the penalty kill? Yeah. 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 That he, like, fucking single-handed, that he short, that he scored a fucking shorthanded goal. <laughs> when in reality, he fucking stood there crying, like, like fucking like a little bitch. falling apart. <laughs> no, he wasn't actually crying. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he was just, like, in so much fucking pain, but he, he, he was like, it I'm out. gonna do this. He didn't fucking play well there. <laughs> His fucking leg sucked. You know? So, uh, this, so, so, that I mean, upset he, me. he had a... He had a, a pretty good shift by some 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 player standards. <laughs> <laughs> One like, better shift. Like Chris Russell plays yeah. like that, that kind of shift yeah. on his knees like half the time. Right, so. he just chooses to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, Gregory Campbell was fucking immortalized, rightfully so, for doing that. But nobody said that he fucking scored a goal on the play. And it would be cheap if the Penguins were like, "Hey, buddy, cool what you're doing." Score a goal. Plus, Penguins are already giving up so many damn goals that series they couldn't have afforded to give another to let up another one. And then, fucking the Justin Timberlake performance. Everyone fucking decided they were going to be all mad about the Prince thing and that Timberlake was going to be whack. And everyone just fucking repeated that. And Timberlake was fucking fine. It was. It was. I, I said it was underwhelming as heck. And yeah, like I'm standing it was by fun, that. But it was. It was like it wasn't bad it wasn't bad it was it was fine but like i think you expect more than fine oh when it no comes i to think it. that everybody was fucking waiting for it to suck really because, yeah because the the new song yeah, the, well, yeah he only played one fucking song off the new album right but he didn't even bring out any guests seems like he right. kind of really mailed it in well he did the uh what it gave me douche chills that he did the bruno mars thing that he like walked out like fucking west side story yeah, style yeah. with like a crew of three dudes behind him um I also was dressed like a fucking idiot. Yeah. I don't know what your thoughts were on that, but... Oh, no, like, it, it was, like... Again, it was fine, but I... But everybody was just fucking... Just 
killing him. And the prince thing, he didn't do a fucking hologram. And everybody's like, oh, why did you do the well, hologram? He scrapped the holog- hologram because of the fucking backlash. Oh, did they? Yeah. So that's why I think everybody was like, they were still mad because he planned on doing the hologram at first. Uh, and then that was like the backup plan. So they were, they were, I Ooh. think they were still mad that he, he went for it with like some sort of prince tribute. But that's fucking weird. Like, why can't you do a prince tribute? He didn't fucking force himself into anything. He fucking played a prince performance and fucking like. I think they were more. I think people, a lot of people, were more mad that he like sort of made it into a uh, faux duet kind of type thing because yeah. because Prince said clearly in that that interview back in like 1998 or something whatever that that. There should not be, uh, but there wasn't like, like interaction digital. like there, you know, like that was. Yeah, but that, he still like he laid it. He laid it over. They basically like it sounded like he, Timberlake tried to make it seem like they were performing together. See, like, in I sync. didn't. I thought that he like he no was singing along to it. Oh god! Like he was singing along to it. Prince was singing the melody the whole fucking time. It wasn't like like Prince sings a little, Justin sings a little, Prince sings a little. It's Justin basically sings. like. It, it, if you if you have a problem with that, then yeah. you have a problem with uh, like Karaoke. sampling. Yeah, sampling old old artists. Yeah, but my thing is, people were just fucking waiting to like. I like Jim. I like Jim. I uh, thought it was tasteful. Like, yeah. if it weren't for the comment, the 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 quotes that Prince had that somebody dug up saying like I don't want to right to, but again they took those over to context the t- context to do that because he was discussing a hologram right when he was talking about it and he didn't actually do the hologram so uh, I mean I thought the Prince tribute was fine I, yeah. I loved the lights thing that they did that was yeah. fucking sweet and yeah. did you see that in the city mm-hmm. that was that was really great um yeah I mean like I just was underwhelmed by the Timberlake thing but, like a lot of people just didn't. I'm kind have of an explanation him. as to why it was so bad. You know, they just fucking saw that everyone was tweeting it. I just thought, I thought the album stunk. I'm just I'm kind of over Timberlake at, at this point. Well, someone brought up him being overrated, Me. and you're no, you, you are not alone. You may have. I like, did. I yeah. tweeted it. I was like, I think that we're approaching Timberlake is overrated, uh, or we're already there. Well, if you're considered. I always say, like, if you're considered top five at your position, you're automatically overrated. And Timberlake might – Timberlake probably if he is, is like, if he's one considered of the, a top, like, top five, five like, no, most what? important artists right now. That is – that is where, like, he gets to do whatever he wants. Everyone fucking buys it. Yeah. Who else? Like, it's, no, I it's know, him, but it's Taylor Swift, it's Bruno Mars. I mean, he, those are probably the top it's three. It's crazy to me that he's in that position because he hasn't done anything good in, like, right. five years, six but, years. And he's got that kind of, like, uh, Mariah Carey that. confidence about him where like, yeah. he just kind of struts out and it's, like, make way He's resting JT. on his laurels. Yeah. He, but, uh, and, like, in as he should, like, his early stuff was fucking great. Yeah. And, uh, like, so when I say that he's overrated, I'm not saying that he's overrated – based off of like his entire catalog it's just like he's over it now because he hasn't done anything good in five six prove. years yeah. yeah right now i mean we've talked about can't stop the feeling it's, uh, yeah it's like a fun pop song but it's fucking lame and it's he a, should be doing better he's above it he yeah, should be above it exactly and then this fucking album is the other thing that he's done since then and i haven't listened to all of it but it's mostly trash yeah, and it might be completely trash. It's not. I, compl- I it's like not completely. It's not completely trash. I don't. I don't like filthy. But I like, love. I was doing this all the time, walking around the mall. I love yelling. Haters gonna say it's fake. Yeah, you were tweeting that a lot. I do. Yeah, <laughs> I think like two people understood it. Uh, and the, yeah, but like a lot of the songs just fucking lame. He's trying to be like Migos, and it's just it's fucking weird. Hey everybody, uh, tweet. I'd imagine dragons to stop giving us cease and desists, please. Yeah, we got we got a uh, we got a nice. Doesn't little, matter what we got. We got lo- we got lawyer them. speak. We, we got, got lo- yeah, we, we got, got a lawyer got email. An awful lot of lawyer speak. We got we a lawyer email it. saying that we need to uh, got stop doing some of the things speak. that we're doing. Got an email with lawyer speak. Uh, we're not allowed to say what it was. Yeah. But, We're out of liberty. A lawyer was involved. Uh, Law- lawyer speak was involved. <laughs> if lawyer speak was involved. Uh, I may have. Uh, I may have jumped the gun on saying what it was. No, nope, no, nope, that's between you and your lawyer. <laughs> that is who's our lawyer? Is it Randy? Uh who should be our lawyer? Who should be our lawyer? It's probably Ryan. <laughs> Ryan just does everything. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't if we don't know uh what how to do something, we just give it to Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, 
I'm sure I can I'll figure tell it you, out. I have forwarded a lot of emails to Ryan <laughs> in my day. Uh, speaking I of love which, fucking forwarding emails to people with, by being like, hey, we should you not have a brunch email this? because we don't respond to any of the emails that we get. We used to back in the day, but yeah. I think. Well, because now we get an email every time there's any sort of fucking transaction with yeah. any of our fucking things. It just gets so, buried in the. Yeah. So and I I've seen good emails and stuff that uh, yeah somebody emailed us recently saying that our, our Google Play is not updating anymore and, and I think my I fixed email that response to that is I did not know that we had a Google Play thing <laughs> well I fixed it uh, and speaking of which uh, Ryan our guy helped set up a uh, a redirect for our YouTube page now so you can go to listenerbrunch dot com slash watch. And it'll give you, it'll bring you to our YouTube page, and that's where you can. Why don't we just make it watch. uh, watchingthebrunch.com? <laughs> hey, who's gonna say it's fake? <laughs> you know how many people actually think that this podcast is called Listen to Brunch? Feidelberg thinks it's called Listen to Brunch. Really? Yeah. Which, like, I don't hate it. He he uh, wrote up a thing that we did uh, one of our Billy Riggins interviews. He was oh, like, really? uh, Derek Phillips uh, told Listen to Brunch that they threw him a party. I kind of like that, though. I kind of like and having at that the, point. Uh, Final Burger had been on like nineteen seven, episodes. Eight, seven, eight episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I honestly like don't hate it. Like I think that's a good name in itself. Mm. Listen to brunch, and then like brunch is just the shorter version of mm. that. So, uh, it where it does come into play is when people think that it's called Listen to Brunch and they search for it. Yeah, uh, they can't find it. Yeah. So that has happened to. A I kind of like that. I like being that's like a little underground. Like sometimes you check the internet for us and we're sold out. Like we're not we're not available that day. 